Hi, this is Yasas Fitsu and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 163 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating the importance of good guide caster engagement and good guide caster support for CTO PCI. The patient was referred for PCI of a right coronary artery, chronic total occlusion. We try to use femoral and radial access, as is our standard practice. However, the right radial artery was too small and couldn't advance a guide catheter through it, and ended up using bilateral femoral arterial access. We did have a lot of difficulty engaging the right coronary artery. We tried it with an AL1, an AL.75, and a 3D right guide catheter, but none of them could engage the RCA, and eventually we ended up using a 7 French JR4 guide catheter. The left was engaged with an EBU375. We placed a safety wire into the LAD after giving heparin. The patient does have a right coronary artery CTO. There is a well-defined proximal cap. There is a previously placed stent in the area of the occlusion. There is a small marginal coming at the proximal cap. Distal vessel is of good quality, and the distal vessel is filling mainly via septal collaterals. This is the area of projection demonstrating the septal collaterals as well as the occlusion that is approximately 30 to 20 millimeters long. Our plan was to try first with undergrade wiring, following by retrograde crossing. We tried with a turnpike spiral as well as a Gaia Next and a Hornet 14. The proximal cap proved to be fairly resistant, but eventually we were able to make some partial advancement. However, our guide support was fairly poor and couldn't advance the wires further down. As a result, we used a guide extension. This is a six fret strap liner. And then we switched uh, for a Gladius Mongo guide wire, which uh, after multiple attempts was able to find a pathway within the previously placed stem, and then seemed to advance uh, towards the distal right coronary artery. This is the contralateral injection, confirming that we're in the true lumen and actually we used the moment of opacification of the RCA to advance our guide wire further distally into the RCA. However, we had difficulty, we couldn't advance a balloon through there. And when that happens, there are two ways to treat the problem. One is to modify the lesion and the other is to improve support or change what we're trying to deliver, which are all discussed in video 23.1. This is the algorithm for balloon and crossable lesion. The first step is to use a small balloon. The Subfire 1.0 is the most commonly used one and potentially rupture the balloon. The next is to increase the support with a guide extension or using a bite wire or an anchoring technique. The next step is to use a microcatheter. Then if it doesn't work, use laser or atherectomy and finally use subintimal techniques. In this case, which I've delivered, this is a Subfire 1.0. Unfortunately, we pushed a little too hard. We didn't have a very good support to start with, and then eventually everything was lost. The wire position was lost. These are the moments in a case where feelings like frustration, anger, fear come over, and obviously these are not the best feelings because they disrupt what we can do later on. The better way to respond to these problems are to control what we do Let's not forget that what happens is not always under our control. For example, losing access is partially because of us pushing too hard, but also the anatomy is complex and the support was poor. So keeping calm and sequentially troubleshooting is the way to go. We re-engage the vessel. We use the trap liner again. This time we tried a hockey stick guide and uh, we did get better support. Fortunately, we were able to rewire fairly easily through the CTO, and this time we were able to deliver a subfire balloon, followed by a larger balloon, which improved the stenosis, but still we had a lot of difficulty delivering equipment, and also we did an IVUS that could not cross, but saw significant calcification in the proximal cap. As a result, we decided to switch to atherectomy. We were able to get a Caravel microcatheter all the way to the distal right coronary artery, and then switch for a rotowire, we do have a restoration of undergrade flow. Unfortunately, there's also likely a little dissection in the proximal portion of the vessel. We did use a 1.5 millimeter rotablator burr at 150,000 RPM. We did not use a temporary pacemaker. However, we limited our runs to 10 seconds 
At that point, the patient started developing bradycardia and would stop uh, doing atherectomy attempts. Also, we were careful not to advance very distally because there was dissection of the distal uh, portion of the lesion. After atherectomy, we do have a proximal dissection, we do have a distal dissection, maybe there is a little air embolization there as well, but we do have a good TM3 flow to the right coronary artery. We were able to deliver uh, 3.0 millimeter balloons, and then we were hoping to cover everything with a long drag eluting stem. But unfortunately, as we'll see, there's still a little residual dissection distally, and there's still some dissection in the proximal portion of the vessel. So we ended up uh, stenting distally with an additional uh, stent, and then uh, proximally with another stent covering the proximal dissection, and that provided a nice result with TM3 flow in the right coronary artery. Several lessons from this case. The first one is uh, regarding the importance of guide catheter support. Having strong guide support is a critical component of being successful in CT or PCI. In this case, we were able to successfully cross, but then lost everything because our guide support was very poor. JR4 should generally not be used for CT or PCI. In this case, we had limited choices because the amplets and the 3D ride did not work. But even with the guide extension, JR4 was not the optimal guide, but eventually we were able with the hockey stick and the guide extension to successfully cross the lesion, deliver equipment and get a nice result. This happened here because this patient had a small size aorta, which makes engagement more challenging. We also saw that uh, balloon and crossable lesions can be challenging, especially when the guide support is poor, and it is important to have the algorithm in mind, starting with small balloons, getting more support with a guide extension or an anchoring technique. And then in this case, we did use a therectomy, rotational therectomy for plaque modification that helped both with uh, crossing, but also with expansion of the lesion and achieving a nice final result. Thank you.